Hello, and welcome to Marathon Swim Stories, where we explore the human side of the superhuman feats of endurance swimmers and those who support them. I'm marathon swimmer and coach Shannon Keegan. Martin Webster inadvertently moved to the open water swimming mecca of Rapperswil, Switzerland, a handful of years ago, and found himself diving in after a 25 year swimming hiatus. Following a successful 26-kilometer Lake Zurich Marathon swim, a friend suggested he go for the channel, and so he did. Just like that, he was addicted. Martin is one who enjoys setting goals and working towards them, and he certainly makes it sound easy to do just that. Once you get past the six-hour mark, time just flies by, he says. It really flies. I hope you enjoy the nuggets of wisdom that Martin shares in this episode. What's your story, Martin? <laughs> I can't really start. Um, <laughs> I, got, I mean, I really got into open water swimming late, as you know, you, you saw maybe in my bio. Uh, it's only like five or six years that I've been doing this. Um, and it really sort of came off, off um, the back of a move to Switzerland where I really upped it. Um, I moved with work from the UK to Switzerland and found myself in a wonderful place called Rappersville. And um, not knowing at the time that Rappersville is a, is a bit of a sort of a mecca for open water swimmers. And we've, we've had a race going here from, from uh, Rappersville to Zurich for the last 30 years now. So everybody and anybody that has, I guess, been in the, the world of open water swimming has done it. And I didn't even know that. And I just sort of happened upon this place and, and started swimming. And, uh, you know, um, I'd done a few 10Ks and 5Ks and sort of it just sort of started to push uh, a little bit. And then somebody said, well, you know, why don't you do this? Um, and prior to that, I'd not swum... Yeah, I'd swum a little bit in the sort of three years prior to that, but the, I, had a, I had a sort of break of about 25 years of not doing any swimming. I used to swim as a kid um, to a decent level and um, I went to university and decided, yeah, I can't, put, I can't give it 100%, so I'm not going to do it. I'm a, I'm a little bit like that and decided to go off and do other things. And then, you know, your career career starts and your family starts and you know before you know it 20 years have gone and you know I haven't really been in a pool other than to other than to lounge around so uh, yeah um, and it was a friend of mine that I used to swim with that really got me back into it and uh, I, I, I went back to the UK at one point and um, she pestered me for about two years to go down the pool and join the club join the master's club and I really didn't want to do it and then I went down and I was so shocked at how bad I was and how unfit I was, uh, it sort of shocked me into doing a little bit of training, really. And it sort of sort of started from there. And, uh, you know, because back in the day when I used to swim, there was no real outlet. There was no there was no open water swimming. There was no no triathlon. Uh, mm -hmm. So not, not, I, not that I was aware of. And, um, you know, the real long distance stuff was was the stuff that crazy people did. You know, back <laughs> right. <in> the <laughs> Uh, but yeah, it's 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 becoming more and more popular, um, and I think um, yeah, Zurich was Zurich was really the start of the long distance stuff. And um, somebody said after, well, why don't you have a go at the channel? And um, yeah, it seemed like a next step. Thinking, you know, it's only an extra five kilometers, not knowing anything, <laughs> um, and, it, and it and it obviously it isn't. Um, so I decided at that time to sort of sign up for for the swim trek uh, CDT. Um, oh. Did that the first year, and um, that's that's sort of really what gave me the confidence to sort of step up and, and do the long distance stuff. Um, you know, some great people on there. And the following year, I met Mark there, and Mark Mark was one of the guides on um, on, on CDT with swim trek. And Is that the sort of channel distance training? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a su it's a super week. Uh, it's based in Mallorca, and um, it, it's it's got all sorts of people people just coming just to see what it's all about. Through to mm -hmm. people that have their swimmers that have their their slots booked already for the next few years, and um, it's really nice to be with like minded people. And um, I did it first year, and I thought, well, you know, I swam the channel after that, and it was it was okay. And that now it's sort of part of my routine. 
And, um, you know, I really enjoy going back. Unfortunately, the last two years, we've not been able to go back. Yeah. Uh, this year's was cancelled and last year's was also so. Um, so we've had to do other things. But, um, yeah, it's, uh, it, it's, a, it's a really fantastic thing. And uh, I, I think they were the, probably the original. Mark, Mark, you correct me if I'm wrong, but they were one of the first to, 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 to start these sort of things going. Obviously, apart from the Dover group, mm. that have been there quite some time. But in terms of the overseas camps, and there's been a lot of spin-offs from, from that since. And, you know, you, you've got so many people doing these sort of things these days. Um, but, it, but it is a nice way to, to sort of start a, an open water swim season off, at, at, you know, in sort of March and, you know, get your six hours in and, and get acclimatised to the, to the cold. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah and since then I've done a lot of swims it's um it's sort of a bit bit addictive I guess let's go back to um so your first time at Mallorca you'd mentioned like Ooh. well first you mentioned like the long stuff was what crazy yeah. people did how did you make the crossover <laughs> it's really strange because I didn't know whether I could do it you know and um I went with my wetsuit in the in my bag thinking I don't know whether I can stand this cold <laughs> And, and then everybody's there and everybody's doing it. You sort of feel, wow, you know, I've got to have a go. I'm, I'm, a, I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit soft if I can't do this. And, uh, you know, you know one, one, the, the nice setup is, you know, you start with an hour and then it's two hours and then it's three hours and then it's six hours. So, so hopefully you build up over the week. And mm-hmm. um, occasionally they have to move things around because of the weather. Mm. And you end up doing your six hour swim on day two. Um, but it's um, it, it's nice, and you know, I, I learned so much during during that first session. Um, you know, the, the the guides are fantastic; they come with a, a breadth of experience. I'm really bigging up swim trek here. I know. Yeah, <laughs> I, you know, I, I I just think that you know it, it's a great setup, and and I like being around swimmers. It's so nice to be around people that've got the same mentality as you. Guys. What was that like the first time? First time was great. Um, you know, it, I, I just um, I just absorbed everything. You know, it was um, it, there's no one way to do it. You know, everybody has their own routines and so on. But it was I think the first year was just a matter of just just absorbing as much as you can and taking advice. And, and I think at the end of it, you know, some of the people like Kevin Murphy saying, you know, you, know, you can do it. No problem. You know, you're capable of doing it. So, you know, that gave me a lot of confidence going out of there. And uh, yeah, it was uh, great. And, and every subsequent year, I've, I've learned a little bit more. Um, you know, there's been different guides and different swimmers. And you learn from the swimmers as well. I mean, having just been around the swimmers and what everybody does. Um, mm-hmm. So even though, you know, a lot of people go to do their six-hour qualifier, it's, uh, I, I, I just feel it's, um, it, it's just a great way to start the season. For me, it's not about that. It's, you know, learning a little bit more from other people that are doing things, picking up little things each time um and um you know just uh, being around the swimmers really and i will continue to do that in some some way or form at least at least have a camp you know go to a camp in march april um mm-hmm. it, it it used to be sort of the start of the season now now i sort of swim through you know so i'm, I'm swimming all year in the lake um at the moment it's been it's been difficult this year because the pool's all closed in in december yeah so i did mark's uh, thing in um when was it, Martin? November, we did. I think you did it as well, Shannon. Uh, still. Uh, and, then the, and then the pools closed, and then the pools closed, and, and you know, we were down at sort of seven, eight degrees, and then it drops right down to four degrees. Uh, so you're only doing, uh, I guess, you know, 20 minutes or so max uh, right. at that temperature. It's starting to go up now. The pools are still not open there uh, in Switzerland. But uh, I'm trying to sort of... Um, do more aerobic work and do do running a lot of running. I started running a couple of years ago just to try and <clears throat> make up uh, some of the aerobic uh, mm-hmm. um, exercise that I needed to do and a little bit of cycling. So yeah, you know, I try and do that and don't worry about it too much. It's uh, I have a set routine that I go through every year, but it's just sort of been blown apart the last couple of years. You know? Right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think most of us can empathize with that. But tell us about your first um, channel. How how did it go? It went well. Uh, I, I felt like I really trained and I really prepared for it. You know, I, I started with the camp. I built up. I had a few test swims beforehand. Um, you know, I did Zurich again that, that year. Um, I went over to Dover and I did the training in Dover for, for a few uh, few of the weekends and did the, the sort of seven, seven and six back-to-back sessions there. Mm. 
and and I really felt good going into it. Um, I had a crew that were were sort of inexperienced. They were sort of friends of mine. Uh, <laughs> gave, fantastically gave up their their uh, their time uh, to come and support me uh, and family as well. Um, but I had, I had a great experience. Um, I've, I've had some not so great experiences since, but uh, I think that went pretty perfect. I think I had to wait about two days to get my swim, and uh, and and I swam. You know, it was uh, it was a good swim, fast swim. Um, you know, I was really happy with it, and I find it okay. I had some I had some gas in the tank left at the end. It didn't really phase me at all, and then you know you start thinking about other swims after that. So what next? Right. Yeah, and, and very very. Sorry, I was going to say, how did your crew do? Your buddies? They were, they were okay. Yeah, they were okay. I was a little bit worried about uh, seasickness for a couple of them, so we had more than we needed, uh, just in case. But you know, on the day, it worked out okay. Um, there's a vast difference in the the, the boats and, and the pilots that you, you have. Uh, I, I stick with one guy, Kevin Sherman, who, uh, who's seen me right, and I trust him. Um, completely you know he's there to look after my safety in the water mm -hmm. and, and I trust him completely so um if he says go I go if if not I don't go so and uh, and my crew you know that that day of you know they, they'd learned we, we had a lot of Skype sessions because they, they were in the UK I was in Switzerland you know so I put a swim plan together for them you know so on the day everybody knew what they were doing everybody knew who was back up uh, I think that's really important. And I do that for every swim now. I put like a that's swim great. book together. Everybody has a role to play and knows what they're going to do. Um, just adjust that each time. So you feed that plan. Some, something somebody had suggested to you or did you just kind of have that impulse that when you put together a team? It, it was something that I took out of work, so to speak. I was going to say, it sounded project, sounds like something. Project, that you, project yeah. stuff. And, yeah. um, you know, it, it just really worked well for me on, on the day and as I said I I do that for every swim now I put a swim plan together and we go through it before and then we go through it just before the swim so mm -hmm. everybody knows what to do um you know what we're going to do on feeds what we're going to do in terms of swim kit and so on um everything transport you name it who's arriving where phone numbers you know That's everything fantastic. Is in so, yeah, and I share that to people. If yeah, people want it, you know, they're welcome. The, the, the fantastic thing about our community is, is the, the fact that people help. Uh, it's not competitive. I don't find it competitive at all. Right. People really help. People really share their information and, and tips and tricks. And, uh, you know, I'm the same. You know, if I can help anybody in any way, I will, I will give them everything that I, that I have. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, not, uh, it's not competitive at all. Right. It, it seems like we're, well, yeah, like, cause I think probably because another, you know, marathon, there's no, no marathon swim can be repeated. You'll never no, have the no, perfect day. Not. So anyway, so it takes that, you know, like starting line out, it takes everything out of it. <laughs> it's, a, it's a beautiful thing though, I think for our support, for our sport. And everybody's really supportive. You know, it, you, it, the ideal is to, to get to the other side, you know, yeah yeah that's it and that's that's all the whole people are concerned about but but it's been great and i, I you know you meet some fantastic people I, w I was training that first year in in dover uh actually the day before the swim and i and i met dan simonelli mm. he just popped up next to the wall at the end and dove the beach and said uh yeah who, who are you and we started talking to each other and then he said oh you should come to catalina and do this and i thought oh the shark's there and uh, you know it's uh, i don't know about that and and then he swam the same day as me, and then we met on the beach the next day, and he start, we started talking again. And um, two months later, I sort of called him up and said, "Yeah, I've been thinking <laughs> about that." And, and you know, I, I I went, and he supported me, he kayaked for me when I did Catalina. Is that the and same year, different year, next year? It was the following year, yeah. And um, yeah, and and similar things have happened. Uh, Sydney Didier, I don't know if you know Sydney. She mm. she's out of New York, and uh, we met mm. in Italy. And she said, "Oh, are you coming to New York? Come and come and you know, I'll crew for you, and just let me know." And you know, I did, and she did, and she's fantastic. <laughs> you know, so it's it's just fantastic. And I do the same. Anybody coming to Rappersville, you know, it's it's there. I'm there if I'm if I'm not swimming, and even if I am swimming, I try to do I try to coordinate and help and swim one year at the same time. I won't do that again. Because that was just too much. Uh, mm. But generally, if people are coming, um, then then I will help out and, and support. And that's that, that's the way our 
our community is. It's fantastic. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Really. Yeah, for sure. So, yeah. Somebody- is it is it just a coincidence of meeting someone on the beach they tell you to come to Kelly and like what's the draw to keep coming back to do marathon swims I think because each one's different um you know there's lots there's lots of swims that I want to do uh and I know every every day you 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 turn up uh to do your swim and uh, you just don't know what's going to happen you know the routine might be the same but you know how you react to it is very different Mm -hmm. and that's the draw really um and and you have some highs and you have some lows, uh, really for for sure. Um, but it's I think the unpredictability is really interesting. It's attractive. It's attractive. Um, yeah, for me. For you. And yeah. I just like being out there in the zone. I think when you get past six hours, it's like uh, yeah, it, you're you you're you're in the zone, and it's it's a fantastic sort of experience that you have. And time flies. Time just just flies. Mm-hmm. Tell us about some of your more interesting reactions to things being similar, but different when you when you're facing them in the moment. Uh, I think yeah, I had some tough swims like like uh, Loch Lomond was probably the coldest swim that I did. Uh, that definitely the hardest swim I've ever done. It was twelve degrees, and uh, for twelve hours that was really tough. I really had to dig deep, and uh, I think every every muscle in my body at some point was cramping. And, um, you know, it was a real test of sort of willpower. Uh, I, there's, there's not been any swim harder than that, for sure. And mm-hmm. um, North Channel was, was a tough one, but uh, not as tough as Lone. It was tough because of the, I, I felt because of the jellyfish, I handled the cold a lot better. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the jellyfish were, uh, were quite, um, yeah, a challenge, like pouring acid on your skin. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so you're cold and you're hot at the same time. And um, I think Mark will... Testament, a testament to that. I, I think I was a wreck when I got out of that one. But uh, in in my head, I think you think to yourself, if I can handle these swims, then you know, I can handle any swim, really. Yeah. Certainly of that, certainly of that distance. You know, I've never gone past sort of thirteen hours. Um, I don't know. I don't know. There's people that, obviously, a lot of people that do that, and right. uh, I don't know whether it's the same. It's just time flies by. Um, I need to do something a little bit longer and up it, but really going forward but um yeah so yeah it's um yeah cold cold is one thing but i think i think i've mastered that a little bit jellyfish also um i prepare for everything you know that, that's yeah. the thing it's i think first year in the channel you know swimming in the dark you have to swim in the dark you have to prepare for the boredom you have to prepare for the cold everything that is going to be thrown at you the weather you have to get out and do it um that's the only way really yeah. If you don't want to, you don't want to experience it first time you're in the middle of an ocean, you know. And right. Then, and you might have a a party, really. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, how do you describe the feeling of completing one of these big swims? Uh, sometimes really good. Sometimes uh, I don't feel it over. It's a bit of an anticlimax, I think. Um, and I think I, I enjoy the training and I enjoy the prep and I enjoy the journey. So, you know, I, th- I think um, I, I, uh, the first channel swim was great. It was very ecstatic. Um, North Channel, I was a wreck, as I said, so I wasn't really in a place and same with Loch Lomond. But um, ge- generally, I feel uh, pleased with myself and it's nice to to get back on the boat and, uh, and and certainly get in the pub at the end and have a beer and, and that, that's when you really start to feel great. Uh, but I, I I sort of I do feel a little bit anticlimactic at the at the end um, and you're always thinking that okay what am I going to do next? It's a bit of a drug I think. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. I've never felt so battered up. I uh, I don't think there's another swim there. So and there's there's a there's a whole list of ones to do at some point, given time and money and. Yeah, that's really it. Right, right. Yeah. yeah. How do you, um, so how have you learned anything about picking crew? Do you have like a, a trade secret for picking your crew for Big Swim? Yeah, I, I, I think the best thing for, for me, that, that the best crew to have are, are people that are, that are, are swimmers, really, that, that know what you're going through, that know you as well mm, when, mm-hmm. when you are, when you're when you're in trouble and when you're not um you know a, a, again you know having people that are that have to be positive 
you know, there's no negativity there. So I think I, I tend these days to select people that are other swimmers that have done what I've done or some of the things that I've done um, and, and know exactly what you're doing. Um, you know, I started off with inexperienced people. I have a group of, I have a sort of group of people, various places now that can help and, and do help. And, and they're fantastic, you know, and I couldn't do any of this without us. None, none of us can. Yeah, you know, it's, right. it's, it is a team sport. It, it's a solo <laughs> swim, but it's a, it's a team sport. And um, you know, they're fantastic. But uh, yeah, I think in crew, in crew, I'd just rather have other swimmers around me, really, that know what I'm doing. <laughs> And everybody knows the routine. Um, yeah. 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 And it works well, like you were saying, where you kind of finish a swim, you know, meet somebody and they invite you out somewhere else and then they offer a crew for you. You, They might not know you personally as well, but I don't know. They no. know, like you said, what you're going through. And yeah. Just just knowing, you know, when you get on that boat that you are cold and you're tired and somebody to dress you. Put your socks and take your trunks off. All these sort of things, you know. There's no dignity and no water swimming, but somebody that just knows exactly what to do. And swimmers now, if you've done it yourself, you, you know what people are going through. You don't need to ask anybody for anything. Yeah. Whereas in experience crew, it's yeah, first, first, certainly first time. It's sometimes you you have you're still having to do things yourself, and all you should be really doing on the day, I guess, is is swimming. You know, you just swim, and everybody everybody else does their thing around you, but they know what they're doing. So. Yeah, hence the hence the swim yeah. book, <laughs> so they know yeah. what their job is. And, yeah. What um, swim are you most proud of? What swim am I most proud of? Actually, Loch Lomond, because it was a it was a dig deep, really. Um, mm-hmm. Yes, very very cold. I mean, for that for that length of time, I think it was colder than the North Channel. Yeah, um, and there's fresh water too, right? So and it's fresh it's water too, and it just seemed to go on forever and ever. And, um, so yeah, the warm feeds every half hour really helped. It was just swim to feed, swim to feed, every half hour, and not not hang around too much. And and I was so pleased when I got to the end, really. Yeah. And that was on the back of that, that year. I'd done a lot of swims. Um, I planned to do um, I planned to do a two way, and it didn't materialise. I went to Dover, and the weather was just terrible, and I didn't get a big enough window to do it. And um, I did a I did I did a solo uh, second one. I, we, you know, we had twelve hours. He said, "What do you want to do? You either go home and come back next year, or do you want to swim?" I said, "I'm here. I'm going to swim. So let let's do a solo." And we did that, and then two weeks later, I had I had Loman planned, and I thought, ah, do I really want to do it? Yeah, and I forced myself to do it, and um, yeah, I'm really proud of that one. It's, yeah. It took a lot of uh, guts and determination, I think, to get through, and again, a lot of support from guys at You Swim in, in Manchester that helped me out on that one. Yeah, um, Diane was asking if you have advice for coping with a cold. Uh, swim through the winter it's the biggest mm-hmm. thing for me if you can and I know some people have lakes that freeze and so on but I'm, I'm fortunate that that I live on a lake in, in Switzerland and it, it gets down to about three or four degrees so uh, I've been doing it now for the last uh, four years and I find it really helps I mean you know when you're swimming at four degrees even if it's only for 10-15 minutes when you get up to, to 10 to 12 it sort of feels quite tropical Right. <laughs> that's, uh, um, you know that's that's what i would say if you can if you can do that yeah mm-hmm. yeah do what kind of do you do it like daily weekly monthly like how i probably you? swim in winter three four times a week yeah mm-hmm. yeah yeah that's good advice yeah. <laughs> is there anything that you haven't finished uh one swim um i, I swam Allswater, which is in the lake district in the UK and I went over it was June and uh, I planned to do a two-way all's water it's not a long swim uh, it's about 17 kilometers and I thought yeah I'll just do the prep and I got in the water and it was 13 degrees and by the time I got to the f- end of the first one it was 10 <laughs> I, 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 I just couldn't turn around and go back I just didn't think I had it in me at the start of the season so I said well, I had enough here I'm getting out 
and uh, I was ha- I was happy with that. It sort of played on my mind for a little bit because I, I really don't like to stop anything once I get in. But I just thought, now let's learn from it. Um, it's a good experience. I know what my limit is temperature-wise for long swims, and you know it's around about twelve. When it starts to get down to twelve to, to ten for for hours, mm-hmm. it's, it's it's a tough one to do. So I just said, okay, let's let's park that and let's learn from it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that, that's really the only one. Yeah. And the main learning from that was just that, that that's your limit. <laughs> oh, that's, that's that's my limit at that time of the year. I think. Um, yeah, you, as a starting one, you know, to start off and do 34 kilometers in June at that sort of temperature. You know, forget it. That's crazy. <laughs> maybe, maybe at the end, of, maybe at the end of the season. Yeah, but it's uh, yeah, not 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 that not, not not without more practice. I think. Right. Yeah. What have you learned about yourself from marathon swimming? Uh, what have I learned about myself? Um, uh, certainly I can't do it by myself. I need, I need people around me for sure. Um, I've learned that, uh, you can go much further than you, you, you think you can really always. There's, mm-hmm. there's all, even when you're absolutely dead beat, you know, you can go further. Or certainly I can. Um, I, I've learned that, um, you know, endurance sport is quite similar in many ways. Um, that you know, you train for a marathon or you train for Ironman or anything like that. It's actually quite similar. Most of it mm-hmm. is once you've got some training behind you. Most of it is mental. And it's in your head. Uh, so I've learned that I'm reasonably strong when it comes to sort of willpower. Mm-hmm. Um, technique helps big time. Uh, I think if anybody's focusing on anything, you should focus on technique. Yeah because uh, it can cut down the time that you actually you know, are in the water and the time it takes you to get across. So. And I, I find over a season, my, my stroke goes to pieces. And, and, and I use the sort of off season to, to sort of recalibrate and get my stroke back. Yeah. Um, it, it does. It, it's a different type of swimming to swimming in a pool. So it really makes a mess of your stroke, I think. So, so I need that calibration. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, I kind of feel like you... well yeah like you reinforce you end up reinforcing bad habits through the ramping and training you know because you can't just always you know swim perfectly so uh, to me the recalibration is super important I kind of try to do it actually throughout my training and not ramp so much in yards but I am a huge advocate of technique like you said you could get where you're going quicker too but you're going to reduce your chances of injury which increases your ability to swim longer so yeah (laughs) yeah and as I said before practice you know you you have to practice things um I I have a routine and it it works for me and Mm -hmm. I try and vary from that Mm-hmm. Uh, although as i said this 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 year is going to be interesting because it has varied significantly yeah. um, so let's let's see but in in my head i think i'm i'm convinced in in my head it, it is more in your head you know yeah. and if i can get some the, some training in from between now and say august then uh, i can do it it's not a problem um yeah uh, was there any, you said that uh, one of the first things you said was that it takes a team. Was there anything mm. specific that, I mean, I, we, I think we all agree and feel that way, but did you have any specific experiences that led you to realize you need to rely on your team more maybe than you thought you needed to? Um, I think, you know, things like um, having having a swimmer come in with you at some point, I felt really morally uplifting. You know, it gives you a, a real boost compared to... I've, I've done swims with support swimmers, done swims with kayakers next to me. I've done swims where I've... me It's just me in a boat and I've got on a plane, got in swam. Certainly, you know, having people with you, um, either a, a swimmer or a kayaker, really helps, I think, from a psychological point of view. Mm-hmm. Uh, so if, if I have the luxury of, of either of those, then I would always go for it. You know, it's, it really makes it easier for you um having having somebody that knows about feeds as well as i I think is is really important and being able to vary it you know and know you know if you're not peeing you know what what you should be doing to Mm -hmm. to get the flow going again and um so somebody that really understands i think the feeding 
uh, and what you like to eat and you know how to get you through some of the bad patches I think is really important as well so mm -hmm. yeah I think supporting the water and and then also um you know support on feeding I think is is critical yeah yeah that's interesting that you bring it up like that just because I don't know I usually think of feed feeding is something that the swimmer is planning but but you're right at the yes. end of the day it's your crew that needs to be able to you know, like be dynamic <laughs> in the moment <laughs> absolutely they, they need to change it obviously not change it too much because then that, that also has consequences but right. you know to, to know if you're having problems with certain things if you're cold or you can't pee that you know what what you need to do and then, you know yeah yeah so when you're out there in a channel or a lake and things are just start, you know, weather changes, whatever, how do you kind of adapt to these changing situations? I, I, I try um, mentally just to sort of push through. Um, it depends how long it lasts. Um, I, I, I know I can get through a sort of two, three hour periods where it's pretty bad when it's windy or, yeah, particularly the wind. Um, and, and as long as I know it's going to change, uh, then I'm, I can I can push through. I've had a few channel swims where they've, where uh, the pilot said, you know, it's going to be rough at the start for two or three hours, but then the wind's going to drop and so on. And and I've got in there and thought, shit, this is terrible. This, but oh, I've got to trust the pilot. The pilot says this, and, and generally it's been true. And I've and I've got through the three hours and it's been fine, and um, you know for me that that's it. It's it's really trusting in in the people around you uh, that that it is going to come true. Uh, I think everybody has problems with wind. You know, if it's windy and for the whole swim, forget it. <laughs> you know, you don't go either. You know, I know some swimmers will push. You know, because they're so desperate to swim. You know, if it's if it's above four three. I would really say at the start and it's going to be that for a decent period of time forget it you know go, go back the next day if you've got the opportunity um, yeah because you know it's the important thing is to stay safe and, and not kill yourself yeah. right. it's, only swimming. it's only swimming yeah yeah uh you bring up an interesting point though about um the trusting and um and I feel like I kind of call it you know it's like this surrender to your crew how do you how did you kind of come to realize that you needed to put that trust in your pilot and your crew uh, I think you just have to at the start you don't uh, I mean you know especially especially swimming in the channel you, you don't know the, the, these are people that have got you know many channel crossings under their belt and and, and you don't know I'm, I'm I'm sort of a I think I like to think I'm a humble guy. You know, there's people that know much more about swimming and experience of swimming channels than I do. So I have to put my trust in them. Um, mm -hmm. and, and obviously the first time you, you, you are really going out on a limb and trusting people that you don't know, maybe you've only met them for the first time. But then obviously you, 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 I, I always want to go back to those people. You know, so I think for me to change a pilot when I'm swimming the channel, I don't think I can do that anymore because my trust <laughs> is a pilot that I have. Yeah. I know he can get me across. I know he trusts me, mm -hmm. and I trust him. Uh, we know each other, um, so I think it's first time. Yeah, you're putting yourself out on a limb. You don't know. You just don't know how it's going to go. Uh, but after that, then um, and and you learn. Yeah, I, I guess if things went wrong, then you'd maybe have a different opinion, uh, and maybe you would make a change. But so far, you know, everybody that I've worked with and um, that supported me, um, you know, it's worked really well. Have no, no qualms with anybody. Really, they've all been fantastic. Yeah, yeah. It's um, it's an amazing kind of bond that you kind of create. Yeah. You know, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. It's a bond and it's a friendship. You know, it starts to develop really into a friendship. You, you may start off as a, a financial transaction and you know, <laughs> handing over thousands of pounds or thousands of dollars to somebody to to help you get across in, in um, but in the end it sort of turns out into a friendship and it, and it works like that. there's a bit of give and take I think with various things that then they know that you're good for the money and that you and you know you um you you you're, you're going to work together and have a good time on a swim and, uh, you know you mm -hmm. develop that relationship over years now so um, yeah yeah it's a fun sport
<laughs> addictive like you said it's a drug yeah. <laughs> it is it is uh how's the pandemic been for you uh last year was not too bad this year um it's a bit strange because because the pools are closed and i do most of my i say win- winter swimming in the pool uh get, getting back to technique and and doing reps and different sets and trying to make things interesting trying things out and just gradually building um and and actually i i started in the lake in march last year uh because the pools closed then and and i had to change you know so we started in the lake just doing 20 minutes 30 minutes and you know by the by april then we would we were doing an hour two hours three hours you know which was which was fine this year no it's it's been too cold up. I think I've just got just about got up to an hour, an hour, about nine degrees. Um, but I can't do much more than that. So I'm trying to I'm trying to adjust and do more running and, and cycling to, to sort of make up a little bit for that just to keep the aerobic. So um but you know, in, in some respects, um positive because normally I'd be traveling, so I'm trying to squash things into the weekend or something like that to, to get my training in now now i can actually plan my day i'm at home the lake's 50 meters away so you know i uh, I, I have more routine now than i did uh, pre-pandemic and mm. i hope i can continue with a little bit of that you know yeah. once we all get out of this and everybody's vaccinated and this thing goes away at some point <laughs> yeah. yeah did you feel like you'd learned anything from you know, your marathon swimming experiences that helped you kind of get through the tough parts of the pandemic? Like, I don't know. Yeah, I do. I think routine is really important. (laughs) Routine is really important to to get through this. Uh, You have to have a structure to your day. Um, And and I feel if you have that, then um, you can get through anything. I was listening to something on, on the radio on BBC couple of weeks ago was a guy called Tim Peake who's a British astronaut and he was talking about how he deals with isolation in space and so on exactly the same thing he said routine you have to create routine and structure around your day um and you know that that's really what's got me through you know I can get up and go for a walk or run in the morning and then you know I can do something at lunchtime and I can do something in the evening you know so and you know there's work in between, chunks of work in between and after, but I try and structure it like that and block out my time so I can do that. Um, and being at home allows you to do that when you're traveling. Obviously, you can't. It's, it's harder. Yeah. It's, um, but I quite enjoy that and I quite enjoy routine. I, I like the routine and I like I like training. I like building up and I like you know putting some structure to my whole year. I don't focus so much on, on, on sort of weekly and daily stuff. I tend to work in sort of monthly chunks because mm-hmm. things happen. Shit happens, you know, especially in the past when I'm traveling all over the place. It's um, I, I can't hit a weekly target, but I can hit a monthly target on things. And I try and work on that. Yeah, um, yeah. that's good advice. Yeah. Um, oh, I lost I had a good, good question, but I lost it. <laughs> <laughs> Um, what, what motivates you to keep going? Um, I, I, I like to travel. Uh, I like to meet different people. Uh, there are lots of great swims out there. You know, it's really difficult. You know, when you, you look on something like Facebook or you talk, you have a group of friends and say, oh, I'm going to do this. Swim. Yeah, I've never heard of that one. That looks really interesting. <laughs> and I think it's just the, um, the opportunity to travel and meet people, really. Yeah. Um, yeah, I've got pl- I've got a whole list of swims that I that I want to do, and I, I think that's going back to your last question about what's changed. You know, obviously the inability to travel and um, having to cancel all the things that you you had planned, and this year is looking like in some ways the same way. Maybe maybe there's a few more this year, but um, yeah, it's it's just the opportunity to travel and meet people and do some interesting things. And, yeah, yeah. Every, every swim's been great from that perspective. It's not just about the result, as I said. It's the, it's the journey and it's the people that you meet along the way, and mm-hmm. the community. You know, the community that we have and a chance to meet with people. Yeah, yeah I think it was um, uh, Anthony. His last name's escaping me. 
McCarley who said that he, he has to keep marathon swimming because he wants to be part of the community. <laughs> yeah, that's the, the nice thing is, the nice thing is you can go anywhere and you can look online and you can say open water swimmers and, and you could go and meet somebody and somebody shows you their patch and the swims that they do. And it, it's, it's fantastic. And, yeah. and I've never met a community like, like this. Yeah. Uh, everywhere around the world, there's somebody that you can meet up with and somebody that knows somebody. You know, so it's it's great. You, you've got a, you know, sort of friendship group and a social group that you can immediately meet with and you feel at home, really. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's the like-mindedness is really mm. tough to, I mean, and it's something, you know, like people who aren't swimmers and definitely don't want to push distance, like they just don't get it, don't understand. So the second you meet somebody that's like, oh, let's swim over there. <laughs> like, yes, <Yeah. laughs> you know, it's amazing. It's truly mm-hmm. amazing. Yeah. Um, let's see. What advice would you give to an aspiring marathon swimmer? Um, as I said, practice everything. Uh, <laughs> really define what your goals are, you know, because I think swimming a 10K is very different from swimming the channel. And uh, put a plan together. I'm a big planner. Uh, put a plan together to get to that um and yeah just try and take as much advice from as many people as you can but in the end it's about you and what works for you you know what works for martin webster don't work for everybody um so you know to absorb everything in try it in training um as i said don't don't let it be the first time that you do something in the middle of a channel um, but just try everything uh, there's a lot of people out there that will help you for sure yeah. Um, you were just made me think of something else too, that kind of makes it a unique sport is just, well, I mean, maybe it's like this for all sports, but the, the individuality of like, you know, like we can, you can getting all the information that you can, but finding a way to assimilate it for yourself because we're all unique beings, you know, we all, <laughs> we all have to figure out how to make it work for us, but that's, I guess it's something that we all get. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, all these things like, like the cold. I mean, so people handle the cold differently. Very um, much so, yeah. You've got to try it and you've got to push it and you've got to think, how, how can I make this better? Mm-hmm. Um, putting on a bit of extra weight helps, really, with the yeah. cold. I lost a lot of weight last year um, and I really struggled uh, last winter with, with, the, the with the cold. I've put yeah. a little bit more back on and I feel a lot more comfortable now um but you know just being able to deal with all those things that, that get thrown at you going out and swimming as i said in in the wind just to see what it'll feel like in a sort of safe environment you know in your mm-hmm. local environment experiencing uh dealing with boredom yeah swimming is long distance swimming is a little bit boring <laughs> whatever, whatever you can do and whatever your this is where your crew comes in to entertain you yeah. Whatever your crew can do to entertain you really helps. It really, really helps. You know, so if somebody's doing a song and dance and sticks the music on on the boat whilst you're there and you're in a low point, it really helps. It gives you a morale boost. Yeah. 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 That's true. I feel like you're holding back some stories. Tell us the, the scariest moment you had in one of your swims. <laughs> scariest moment that I had. Um... I don't really have a scary moment. No honestly. scary moments? They're all just no. perfectly, you've never had feared for, I don't know, maybe no, scary is no. not. Okay, the not most really. exciting moment that you had. <laughs> One of your well, I think the most exciting moment was getting out on the beach. And, you know, I think um, it's, that first it's really, channel. that's really nice. And, and you know, I swam in uh, as a friend of mine, long-term friend of mine was there and, you know, everybody on the beach coming up to you and saying, well, yeah, have you just swum the channel? Yeah, 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 I've just swum the channel. Really nice. And um, it, n- nice story. I had, um, I, I got out uh, in in, um, in France and uh, a lady came to see me and we started talking and I uh, said, oh, okay, I've got to go now. The day after, I got all these pictures uh, sent to me um, via messenger. And she tracked me down through the CSA and through Facebook, and she'd sent me all of these pictures of me getting out of the water, um, which, you know, I, I didn't think would happen. It was a really nice story, very touching. Um, so, yeah, that, that's that, That's really one of the good ones. Um, 
I think, you know, spending time with people, Mark supported me on, on my North Channel swim uh, last a uh, couple of years ago and just being able to spend time, you know, we waited for a week, you know, that's the other thing. You wait for a week to get a swim and, and it got to the end of the week and we managed to get one day when it, and it, we went. And, and just being, you know, spending time with other swimmers, you know, just shooting the breeze and, you know, just being together was great, great fun. I miss it, really. Um, yeah. On the downside, really downside is going somewhere and not getting a swim. You know, yeah. I went to Japan and I sat in Japan for eight days and I didn't get a swim and the weather just didn't break and I came away and didn't swim. So, you know, that was, uh, that was a real downer, to be honest. Yeah, for sure. Uh, nothing scary some some highs and some some lows but i i, I haven't had anything scary really. <laughs> yeah not yet <laughs> how did you prepare for the like the jellyfish and stuff in the north channel you said prepare for everything <laughs> how do you prepare for jellyfish <laughs> go swim <with> jellyfish <laughs> uh, I, I mean there's jellyfish and jellyfish i mean uh, i go to mallorca and you see um you, you train in the mallorca and all of a sudden they appear out of nowhere and they fill the bay you know, and you get stung and you've got to swim through them. Um, but the ones in the North Channel were a little bit different. Um, they were a little bit more severe in terms of the, what, what they do to you and inflict upon you. And, um, you got stung a couple of times, I think, in, in sort of the week leading to the swim. Um, but, um, yeah, all you can do is go and swim in, in those sort of areas where they have those jellyfish. That's, that's all you can do. Um, yeah. But I won't would dwell upon it too much either, because I know a lot of people have contacted me and said, well, how do you deal with this? So you can go and you can experience it, and then you'll know firsthand. Or the alternative is you can just block it out of your mind and try and forget about it and just go. And I'd rather go and, and actually be stung and then know that it's not, certainly for me, it's not too bad. Um, various, other people react differently to, to jellyfish stings. It's yeah. so... I've seen seen people hospitalised, and you know, for me, it's a little bit like a nettle sting for most yeah. jellyfish. But yeah, they're they're different jellyfish, and people react differently. So yeah, yeah. Again, try go and try and experience it if if you can. You know, there are lots of camps and lots of opportunities. Maybe not from coming from the states, but you know, there's lots of things happening in in Ireland to, to be able to get that experience. Uh, yeah. But yeah, I don't know how it is in, in the US really. I, I, every time I've swum in the US, it's I've never really seen many jellyfish. But I'm sure they're there somewhere. There, yeah. yeah. Um, who's inspired... Yes, right. Yeah. <laughs> who's inspired you? I think lot, lots of people in, inspire me. Um, I think, um, you know, people like Jamie Moynihan, she's, I think she's fantastic. Um, She's, uh, yeah, always pushing the boundaries, really, in terms of uh, what she's doing. I'm always amazed. There's always something new in the pipeline, and mm -hmm. he's, re he's really pushing things. Uh, yeah, so many, so many swimmers. Mm -hmm. Kevin, Murphy, Kevin Murphy also, yeah, amazing, amazing, amazing swimmer. Um, but, uh, yeah, a lot of swimmers, too many. <laughs> Yeah. Um, I was. Oh, what do you've got? Do you want to tell us what you're up to this year? Anything fun, or you want to keep that to yourself? Yeah. No, 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 it's, it's okay. Um, I, I have uh, the various things were cancelled. Um, I was supposed to do Scar last year. I was supposed to do Molokai last year. Now they, they've had to be sort of pushed back. So this this year, um, I'd, I was supposed to do Cook Straight earlier in the year but again that's that's cancelled as well so um so i'm gonna do uh jersey this year around jersey oh cool and, um i will do english channel again this year um, i plan to do a relay and then for some reason lots of the, the rest of the team dropped out so <laughs> my pilot said do you what do you want the spot and i couldn't really turn it down <laughs> How many times have you been to the done the English Channel so far? I've done two two solos and a relay. Okay. Um, okay. Yes. Uh, it's, it's it's always a nice one to go back to, really. So yeah, yeah. so that, that's yeah. that's the plan for this year, and then a few. I think I'll do Torbay this year for the BLDSA, which is on the 
southwest coast of the UK. Uh, that's a shorter well, that's a, one. Okay. Obey is the, the British Long Distance Swimming Association. They have like a, I guess, a whole list of swims that they do throughout the year in the UK. And this is one of the sea swims that they do across one of the bays in the, in the southwest. It's cool. a nice one to do. And maybe something at home. Maybe something at home. There's plenty of lakes in Switzerland to uh, to go for, really. Um, and it's such a beautiful place to swim. I'm, I'm blessed, really. I really am. I want to um, come visit desperately. <laughs> well, Rappersville is uh, waiting for you. You know, it's, uh, <laughs> where, um, and I'm, I'm there to support. Yeah, of course. <laughs> All right. It's a, little bit of, it's a little bit of a lottery to get a place, as you may have heard. Uh, uh, and it's, uh, it's, uh, but it's a nice event. It's run by a Buddhist organization. Um, but uh, yeah, it is, it is a cool swim. Um, generally, water temperature is pretty good. It's around 25, 26 degrees. So it's a warm water one. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's nice. It, again, if you like the swimming community, it's, it's a really nice event. And lots of people come from all over the world. So. Yeah. yeah. Very cool. Thank yeah. you so much for sharing your story with us, Martin. You're welcome. Yeah. I want, I want um, Mark to come off mute, mute though and tell us tell us more stories. <laughs> Does Mark have some stories? Do you have some stories, Mark Johnson? Yeah, I thought you'd say the scariest part was having to spend a week with me in, <laughs> in Scotland. <laughs> that was a pleasure. Yeah, thank you. No, I guess my question for you, I, I was wondering, because I know you have like Molokai and Cook's Drake. Yeah. But then you also mentioned like doing some longer swims. So I wondered if mm. if you if you've thought about doing like the double channel or yeah, you know, some yeah. longer ones and how you compare the two and knock I think them what off I, your bucket list. Yeah, I, I think what I learned about the longest swims just I you just need more time. You need you need a you need a bigger window to swim it. Um and I think for the English channel double you need to really be be there for two three weeks and and get the best window because you need 30 hours you know really to get across and it's just having the time to be able to do that you know uh, to take yeah. two three weeks out of your life and, and go and sit somewhere and I, yeah to be honest at, at the moment I don't have that time I, I can't do it at the moment but I don't think I have that time to do it um yeah Geneva Lake Geneva's an interesting one for the future i think because it's a local relatively local one and the bowden say or lake constance um, is also another one that's sort of a 70k swim that yeah maybe maybe at some point to have a go for because at least yeah, i can say, gone, at least i can sit at home and wait there have you gone back and forth on uh, lake zurich uh, no no so that's also another one yeah yeah, that one, and then also, if as you know, there's there's a southern part to Lake Zurich. So the Rappersville to Zurich swim is only part of it. There's another eleven kilometers south of that, which is divided by a bridge. Um, you know, that's also another one. So there's lots of great swims. Um, the Tunnersee in in Switzerland, uh, Neuchatel, Lake Neuchatel. You know, lots of swims that have not been done by many people. Um, and all that. Last year I did Lake Lucerne. That was a fantastic, swim. really beautiful, fantastic backdrop. You know, amazing mountains coming out of the water. Um, another sort of eleven-hour swim, thirty-five k. It was wow. just an amazing swim uh, to do. Uh, and there's there's quite a few. Maybe, maybe not that distance, but you know, some slightly smaller ones were. You just have the most amazing backdrop. Annecy I did last year. It was a short. It was fourteen k in France and again fantastic backdrop you know just you don't have to do the 35 or 70s it's all the time it's it, you just go and swim nice lakes you know it's, there's so many yeah yeah so and and flathead of course I have to come and do flathead <laughs> right it's waiting there for, it's waiting there for me. you were you were supposed to be here last year about this time. I was supposed to be yeah last year yeah. and it's, it got cancelled yeah so yeah, I think uh, yeah, some of the some of the lakes that are may maybe not everybody does, but I think there's so many interesting lakes out there to do. Mm -hmm. um, I find lake swimming a little bit hard. It is definitely harder than sea swimming for sure. Like uh, not having buoyancy, that buoyancy is, mm -hmm. is, is is tough. Yeah, so hmm. yeah, long lake swim. Yeah. 
would yeah. you see that your travel would change like after the pandemic with you know like having to work from home not being able to travel will that change your travel situation going forward <laughs> or will you just ramp right back up when when uh, you can yeah i mean uh, yeah i have swims planned i'm still, still trying to work out how how i i move last year's into next year and the year after so i gotcha i meant like work wise the travel for work i, I think it'll change I, th- I think the way in which we work going forward uh, will, will be different I, mm-hmm. I don't i don't think i need to travel as much as i used to i think mm-hmm. uh, certainly my company is, is is not thinking that way also uh, great to see people and you have to go and see people uh, but you don't need to travel as much as you used to so it gives you more time back for yourself and your family you know so. yeah yeah and to swim yeah. of course and to swim exactly yeah I've been working from home for like 20 years so it was really like the pandemic from people like where we're Nothing's having changed. to work at home I was just like oh finally people are realizing like you don't have to travel I mean I would travel maybe quarterly when I was working in corporate world yeah. and anyway so it's just kind of neat to see to see the um, just the other people realize that you don't necessarily have to go, you know, hop on an airplane and <laughs> go, go everywhere. To... <laughs> yeah. It's challenging, but I don't know, but you can build a rapport with somebody and know what kind of work they can do. Yeah. You can do for them. And I don't know. And, and, and Shannon, so you're, you're in Oregon, yeah? Are you in Oregon? I'm in Southern yeah. Oregon. Yeah. Like yeah. closer to so California. What, so how about the great swims in Oregon? What's, what's on the, is it like an <laughs> Oregon triple crown or something? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we like we're the Portland Bridge Swim, which is at like a 17K up in Portland. And where I'm at, we have lots of reservoirs and they're the water gets low yeah. later in the year. But there's some beautiful mountain lakes. Mark's probably been to more than I don't know. Have you done the swim, swim trek mountain lake tour thing, Mark? No. Yeah, I was one of the Lots. I was the guy one on of the it. guides for it. Yeah. Which yeah. lakes did you guys go to? Um, it's based out of that Elk Lake, right okay. behind, where where Bob Bruce runs his swim yeah. series, mm-hmm. and then uh, Crescent Lake. Okay, Can't, there are three or four that we went to, and Did then there's three to... or four more like Waldo. And Waldo, okay, good. Clear Lake, <laughs> and yeah, Waldo's gorgeous. That's they're super yeah. nice. It's amazing. It doesn't warm up till I don't know Celsius, but it's like it gets up to 68 by like September, like Labor Day, but it, it's so beautiful and blue and I don't know, it's gorgeous. And there's no motorboats on it at all. It's electric motor only or sailboat. So it's a big, big body of water. Um, so yeah, no, I'm still figuring out where to, I guess because we're so close to the California border too, there's all these Northern California lakes that I'm trying to mm. get my head around. Um, yeah, yeah, we need we need a it's a they call it the state of Jefferson. <laughs> the state of Jefferson triple crown. <laughs> like Shasta and Trinity and I don't know. I'm I'm afraid I need to go because I've got yeah, a, a yeah. work meeting I need yeah. to join. But lo- lovely Thank you to for talk your to time. you. Yeah. And, I, and I hope to meet you one day in person. Absolutely. I'm and sure. I hope to meet you again, Mark, in, in person one <laughs> That day. will happen for sure. <laughs> for sure. We'll all come and, back uh, together again. Yeah. Jocelyn. <laughs> <laughs> didn't get a chance to talk but no yeah. mind. <laughs> thank you guys appreciate okay. your time talk to you later thank you. Shannon. good luck Bye-bye. with your mother martin yeah cheers thank you. <laughs> yeah yeah cheers. yeah Take thanks Bye bye. i hope you enjoyed today's interview do you want to take marathon swim stories with you subscribe on your favorite podcast provider want to connect with like-minded limit pushers Join us for Marathon Swim Stories Live on Tuesdays at 5.30 a.m. Pacific, 8.30 Eastern, 13.30 GMT. Thanks for watching.